I have a prayer book here. It's a Jewish prayer book, copyright 1951, before I was born. And recently I found out about the death of my estranged husband. We were separated, although he'd come by and we'd sit and talk. And we kept in contact with text messages and emails. Anyway, his um, family didn't tell me about his car accident in January of this year. I just found out about this last month because I hadn't heard from him on a recent holiday. He, he always contacted me on holidays. And so I looked him up online. And uh, then I found out um, he had died suddenly. Let's see if this picture will come out. This is from about 2013. Anyway, it was a freak car accident. His health had been failing, but that's not why he passed away. Um, something fell off a vehicle in front of him when he was on a highway and he swerved to avoid it. And uh, nobody else was hurt in this accident, just him. And he, he passed instantly, so he didn't suffer. Anyway, I want to talk about the importance of mourning. Not to just stuff something like this in the back of your mind and so, so you don't hurt. Because if you do that, it will affect your mind. It will even affect your memory. I've known people that have been through very traumatic events and they didn't deal with them mentally or emotionally. They just keep busy all the time. And they have a lot of issues with their personality and especially memories, all memories. This is a book of Jewish prayers. It's from 1951, before I was born. And I want to let you know how important it is to go right through this misery of losing someone because we need to do that for, as they say, closure. Here's a few lines from some of the prayers. This one is for the prayer at the grave of a husband. Help me, O Almighty, to bear this burden bravely. May I not mar the gratitude I here offer by murmurs and complaints. Grant that I may live true to the hopes and prayers which bound our hearts together. Fill me with zeal to carry out every noble thought he cherished and to fulfill every duty to my home and my dear ones which he bequeathed to me. May the memory of his love ever aid and inspire me. And let's see the next prayer, which is from the Mourner's Prayer. May the Father of Peace send peace to all troubled souls and comfort all the bereaved among us. Amen. So it's Jewish tradition to mourn in your home for seven days to receive visitors. I did mourn for seven days, but I wasn't thinking of the Jewish tradition. I was thinking of what's written in the Bible when Joseph was mourning his father Jacob, Jacob, who died in Egypt, and he mourned for seven days. Anyway, I went through text messages, seven years of emails, you can imagine my misery and the memories, but 
I don't want to lose any of those memories. So it's, it's very important not to run away from the sadness, the misery, the emptiness, the loss, because we have to conquer these things. And if I didn't do that for seven days, I wouldn't have refreshed my memory of different things he said and the beautiful video he sent me of he was speaking to me. Um, we met online in 2012 and six months after that we got married. He lived about two and a half hours away from me. I'm in central Florida. He was in northern Florida. And we did not want a civil legal marriages. Basically, legal marriages are usually for financial reasons. We just wanted a meaningful marriage. So we found a place, a religious place, that would have a ceremony and give us a certificate. And so we had a spiritual marriage. Um, I didn't want any interference with my children inheriting from me and he also had children and family that he wanted to inherit his belongings. A legal civil marriage would interfere with that. Um, also, he was a disabled Vietnam veteran and although the Veterans Administration was very good to him about all his medical bills, they don't pay everything, so he had a lot of debts, medical debts, that of course he wouldn't want me to get stuck with. So, um, the religious marriage seemed to be the best option. So what do I have? I have my certificate of marriage. I have a piece of a broken anklet he gave me. I have my memories and photographs. And I have the satisfaction that I mourned for him. I sincerely mourned for him. I don't know if his other relatives did that because they seemed in a big hurry to To have him cremated and and they didn't do with him what he wished he wanted to be returned to the ocean he told me that over and over again but they didn't do that they they sent him up north to a cemetery up there is that love to not fulfill someone's wishes anyway they um I'm not the only relative they didn't contact about his death, so I don't know what their problem is. Maybe they're worried about somebody inheriting his, his car or, or his boat or whatever little money he had, but uh, they should know me by now that I'm not a money-oriented person. But maybe it's a blessing in disguise that I don't have to be involved with them because people that don't care about others, it's just it's the constant sorrow and disappointment being around them. Anyway, um, what can I say? Don't, don't avoid challenges, especially an emotional challenge like losing someone. Um, I feel good that I said those prayers, that I remember him, and also, of course, I went to Legacy.com where the announcement of his funeral was, which I found last month, and, and I wrote something there. Actually, I put um, a link to a YouTube video. It's that old song that says, When the Angels Ask Me to Recall the Thrill of It All. I will tell them that I remember you. So I hope this helps. Don't avoid mourning. It's good for you. And you come out on the other side of it feeling good that you did the right thing, that you honored the person. Um, 
it's all so funny. A few days after I found out about his death, I had a dream. I dreamt I was slow dancing with him. Um, as you know, we can't control our dreams. Otherwise, I dream fun things every night. Um, so I just feel that that's a gift from the Almighty, that beautiful dream, at, especially at that time. So happy Sabbath, and I wanted to make this video on the Sabbath in case anyone else is mourning out there. Um, there's a spiritual world, and, and I just think we'll see all these people again, people that we've lost. And the proof of that is dreaming at night. We're totally unconscious. But we're having all kinds of uh, adventures and experiences in our dreams. So obviously, you know, the spirit doesn't die. It, uh, it gets busy somewhere else. <laughs>